What up, y'all? How's it going? Ben Dean here today. Going back to my Jewish roots. Yep, you heard it. I was raised Jewish. Some of you guys might not know that. One of those rare Asian Jews. I, I was. I guess I still am because I was converted. Anyway, I'm not getting that a little bit later. First, I gotta show you what I got. This is a pretty typical American Jewish dish, I feel like. Well, nowadays, if you're living in New York City or Chicago or something, you might just know this if you're a foodie. But I'm pretty sure this is an OG Great Depression era of food. Maybe not. We got some bagels. We got some cream cheese on them. And we have some, some smoked salmon, which can be confused with lox. I think that's the, the, the true original lox cream cheese bagel. But... I don't know. I feel like it's a pretty similar thing. I'm just going to go ahead and call it lox. Actually, I'm going to call this better than lox. Lox can be pretty intimidating. I think it's in a brine. And this is just smoked. But anyway, there's also avocado on these, which will take it up to the next level. A little bit of fusion, maybe. But these are looking... Uh, mm, these bagels are looking like some of the best bagels I've seen in a long time. You don't really see good bagels around here. People will be sleeping on the bagel. Uh, that's a whole other story. Me and bagels go way back, uh, but anyway, I got two sandwiches here. You can see four different halves sitting up here. This was 26 bucks, uh, and I got the double delight, the double down. This is a double order of salmon up in each one of these. And let me let me try to show you what I'm working with. I know you can't really see it too well, but uh, I mean it is what it is. You can see the cream cheese on the bottom, and then the the salmon. You can see the the avocado and then the bagel this is really really fragile you know i would have i probably should have told him not to cut it at all but here's the top of the bagel that's a solid looking bagel to me here's the bottom i mean it feels nice uh it looks nice i'm gonna try to eat this without being too messy but it's very volatile this creation is pre stacked pretty high there's a lot of slippery foods up in the middle of here and um, I would have preferred this open face, but it is what it is. That's how they sell it. You ain't probably finding this anywhere outside of like, I don't know, maybe one or two places where I live. So let's try this out. That's what happens, but wow. Wow, wow, wow. I haven't tasted anything resembling this flavor in a long minute. We're just going to have to excuse me on this, but... Man, that, what, a, what a combo there. What a combination. Mmm. Mmm. There, mm. got some more of that cream cheese in there, and that's mm, that's where it really kicks in. Instant classic. And honestly, delicious. I'm not a, I, I haven't had lox a whole lot of times. I, I never really liked it growing up. I only had it, you know, when it was around and it wasn't really around me that much. Uh, but I didn't, I remember it being a little bit intimidating for me. This, from what I remember, this smoked salmon here has a, a very similar flavor. But I think my, my horizons have expanded a lot Since I was a young lad, and um, and yeah, I can I can see I can see now my eyes are open, and yeah, man, I wish, ooh, man, I wish I would have really given this a chance earlier because this is mighty fine. Such a simple thing, the crusty little bagel. You got to have the good bagel. None of that, none of that, no brand. The salmon with that texture, man, it's like with the cream cheese with that bite that goes through it i don't know it's this is a a, a winning combination here
hard to eat though when it's like this, but you don't think that that fish and cheese really work. Some people say that they don't, but I say that they do. I do say that. So you're saying you're Jewish. Well, technically, yeah. I was converted to Judaism after I was adopted to America. Fresh off the plane, maybe. I can't really remember. No, I think I was probably like a little bit. I don't know. I might have been fresh off the plane. Too young to remember, I'll tell you that. Too young to remember, but... You know, I did the whole thing, dunked under the water, Paris said, did something, had some little ceremony. And from then on, I was, I was attending the little synagogue in our town for the next 12 years, believe it or not. Every Friday night and every Sunday morning for Sunday school. I don't think there was any kid that was my age. There were some kind of a, a year older, a year younger. I don't think there was anyone in my grade. But there's probably like you know, five, ten kids that went there. So it wasn't really, you know, I wasn't really mingling, co-mingling with the, the fellow peers. Uh, in total, it was this very small congregation. And me and my bro were the only, the only Asian ones, so we were holding it down. You don't really see too many Asian Jews, man. I, like I said, I don't know if I've ever seen one besides my brother. Although, it's weird. The more you go out and meet people and tell them about yourself, the more you hear, like, I met a guy. I was pretty good friends with this guy in Korea. He moved back to America, but he was telling me he had a good friend uh, in America who was also adopted from Korea who's also Jewish, which that kind of blew my mind. Like, damn, that's, I didn't know there's anyone else out there like me, you know, besides my bro. There's another small coincidence. One of my old, he was like, a, I guess I'll call him a coworker. And he was, uh, he wasn't Jewish, but he was adopted from Korea, uh, and his name was Ben. So that was another little coincidence there, which, I mean, we're, if you stay in, in, a, in my hometown your whole life, you won't really, you won't find these people, but you gotta branch out a little bit. Shout out to Ben. Ben Stein. Just kidding. That's not his name. But um, I'll expand a little bit more on my... So I was like, you know, if, you, if you're not familiar with Judaism at all, then uh, you might not know about the bar mitzvah, the bat mitzvah, for boys and girls. I think it's a pretty common thing though in American culture. You, you pretty should know about it. It's basically like the coming of age for Jewish people. Basically, you gotta study up on your prayers and then lead a little, lead a little service. You know, read from the Torah in front of the congregation. You get a lot of money for it. Uh, you know, it's like a, people, you invite your relatives and your friends and family and they come and give you a little bit of cash. A lot of cash, I mean, a lot of cash actually. That was one thing that was like, oh, okay. 
I can make like, because to me, a couple thousand dollars back then would have been like, that's a lot of freaking money at age 12, 13. So I got I got into the study mode just because like well who's gonna pass up on that cash right even though that it's not really me it's not me doing that I don't really at that point in time I wasn't really believing I I didn't believe since a young age to be fair I want to say around age eleven or so is when I or ten maybe I'm like you know what I don't know about it. Something doesn't seem right with these stories that I'm hearing uh, and these customs that I'm for being forced to follow. Something seems a little fishy to me. So I'm like, well, whatever though, where's that cash at? Where's that bar mitzvah cash? Started studying probably for months with the rabbi. Hated it. I was like, nah, man. Every time I'm like, well, do it for the money, do it for the money. But then I was like, you know what? I ain't gonna sell out, man. I'm not. I'm not selling out. And like maybe halfway through my studying, I'm like, no. I'm like, nope. Get me the hell out of here. That's one of my proudest moments as a, as a kid who can't really think straight. Made my own decision to hop. That's one of my proudest moments. God, I wasn't just, you know, selling out at age 12. So, so growing up, if you're wondering, I did, we did a little bit of Hanukkah and we did a little bit of Christmas. That was one thing that really was a little bit different for me compared to the other kids. Uh, I did do Passover. Oh yeah, I, I had to do Passover. So I remember the kids at school, you know, eating their, their bread and I can't have no bread. I'm like bringing matzah to school or something like, man, that was, that was pretty insane. But matzah... If you never had matzah, not really worth looking into, but what else? There wasn't really honestly that much that uh that I had to do like you know, if you grow up Jewish in like New York City you know, your family, all your friends and your family's friends are all Jewish. So you get, kind of get really into that mix. I never really got too deep into that mix. Um, I mean, for one, because only one of my parents was Jew is Jewish, so. I'll tell you some good foods, though, that I would recommend. Latkes, latkes, different pronunciations of it. Uh, they're like a potato pancake, which you eat around Hanukkah, maybe around different times of the year. I don't know, mainly Hanukkah, I feel like. Real fire, it, real good. Matzo ball soup. If you don't know about that, then that's kind of another thing. You gotta go to the deli, maybe. You probably make it at home. Such a messy eat. I hope at least something's entertaining for y'all here. Uh, what else do we got? Challah. You gotta have the. Ch it's a good solid bread. Um, that 
is typically eaten by Jewish people. Gefilte fish, I used to like gefilte fish as well, weirdly enough. I, I think we ate that around uh, Yom Kippur, Rosh Hashanah. And that was uh, a lot of people's worst nightmares, but I kind of liked it low-key. Didn't really tell them nobody though, but I'd always knew, gobble it up. Probably some other things I'm missing, but I feel like this is right up there. If you think of like Jewish foods, this has got to be right up there with it. So I figured I would uh, try this out. I haven't had anything like this for years. Although I love me a bagel. Unfortunately, I probably won't have any time to talk about bagels because I could go on a long rant about bagels in general. which uh, I might just have to do. Highly underrated and overlooked food or type of bread in general, because I mean, where can you get a good bagel? Sometimes people say, yeah, you gotta go to New York to get a good bagel. You gotta go up to like Montreal, like, which can be true. It's like, why is it so hard to find a good bagel? Toasted with cream cheese, hard to beat. That was my go-to 2 a.m. sneak downstairs and get a late night snack meal for a good long period of time. I got a friend named Ben, SCH. He is a self-proclaimed bagel boy, but I don't know, man. I don't know if maybe someone else gave him that title, but it should go to me because if you weren't messing with the, the Skokie bagels from a young age, then you don't really know. I mean, if you're eating Sarah Lee every day, which it's not really a real bagel, but it's still tasty. If you want to go to Walmart, get a decent bagel. Sarah Lee, I've always liked Sarah Lee. Pop them in the toaster, mm, mighty fine. Also through elementary school, I was doing the cold sack lunch bagel sandwich every day for years. One of the all time classics. It's a good food and, it, and you know, it slept on a little bit too much for my liking. Pizza bagels. Come on. But I probably won't be eating bagels again on this on this channel for quite some time. But anyway, there you have it. Hope you learned something about me, maybe. Uh, or the f something, you know? Before I go, though, I want to give a quick shout out to Austin. Thank you for supporting me on Patreon. Really appreciate you. Everyone on Patreon, everyone who's watching this, my videos, for whatever reason you're watching, I appreciate it. And yeah, hope you enjoyed this one. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.